What we want to do in today's lesson is to change this waterfall photo to an out of bounds photo which will look something like this. So let's get started. We'll start with our basic layer, background layer of the waterfall. The first thing we're going to do is copy that with a control or command J. Now we have two layers. We'll go ahead and turn off the bottom layer. And now what we will do is add a layer mask to what we call layer one here. And we'll do that by just clicking on the layer mask icon, which is right here. Now we have our layer mask. Now we will make the frame. So we're going to need a new layer. So I'm going down here to the new layer icon right here. And I'll click on that. That gives us a new layer. It's called layer two. This will be the one our frame will be on. To make the frame, I'm going to get the marquee tool, rectangular marquee. And I'm going to draw a box on our photo that looks something like this, which is kind of a square box. Leave some room for the waterfall to fall down on. This is the start of our frame, so we're going to fill that with white. So I'm going to go to Edit fill and this already set for white we'll say OK so there's our box now we need a frame we're going to do that by going to select watch this we're going to click on modify and contract now if we contract the selection by 50 pixels it's going to look something like this there's a selection that'll make our frame we just need to get rid of this middle part and I'm going to hit delete to do that. That takes care of that. If I right click inside the box, the first choice is deselect and that takes care of the marching ants. <sighs> now we are going to distort this box to give it a 3D look. So we're going to go to Edit, Transform, Distort. Now when we move these handles, you can see it changes the shape of the box. So this will give it a little perspective. Now I'm just going to click on the checkbox and that will commit this. I could have also just double click inside the box. Now we got, the, got to remove this frame from the waterfall. Let's do that by using a layer mask. So we'll click on the layer mask icon. We'll hit B for brush. We need a black brush, which it is, and then we'll just paint over this area and that'll remove the frame. Now if you think you've gone outside too far, just hit the X key. That changes the black back to white and then you can kind of touch up the edges a little bit if you went out too far. Okay, now we're going to need another new layer. So I'm going to go over here to the new layer icon and click on that. That gives us another new layer and this one we're going to fill with a gradient. So I'm going to hit the G for gradient. That brings up the gradient tool. If I click here I want the black to white. I could use any color but black to white is good for this. And I'll draw a gradient from top left, lower right. You can see the gradient on the screen. Now the gradient needs to be below this layer one, so I'm going to move that down right there. Now, to complete the look, we're going to have to remove the outside of the frame to reveal the gradient below. So I'm going to click on the layer mask right here on layer one, which is the waterfall. I'm going to get a brush, tap the letter B. I need a black brush, so now it's black. I'm going to make it a little bigger, and if I paint long around here, I can remove this outside area. Now this brush is big. I'm going to make it a little harder. I'm going to hold the shift, right bracket. That makes it harder. That way I can get up to this edge better. And I think I can do it faster if I use that hard brush. The soft brush might encroach into our photo somewhere. Make sure I get all that. 
Now, when I do get close to the waterfall, I'd rather have my soft brush back. So, in that case, I'm going to click on Shift left bracket, and that makes it softer. And I'm going to hit the, just the left bracket, and that makes it smaller. So, now we just need to finish up getting all the green out of here so it looks like just the water is coming over the edge. So, I'm just running this through. And remember, the old white will take back anything you messed up on. We're using black now, but if we switch to white, we can put back anything that we overdid. But I think we're good. Okay, now we're going to work on the drop shadow for our frame. We're going to do that by clicking on layer 2. Okay, now that's the selected layer. Now next what we're going to do is get the magic wand tool. W for wand. It's in there with the quick selection tool. We'll take the magic wand tool this time and we're going to click outside the frame. By the way, the tolerance is 20, which is fine. And that selects the outside of the frame. Actually, I want the inside of the frame. So if I right click inside, one of the choices is to inverse, select inverse. Okay, now you can see just a frame is selected. This will be the basis for our drop shadow. So let's fill this area. Oh, before we fill it, we need to make a new layer. Okay, now we have a new layer. And let's fill that with black. Now black is our foreground color. Instead of going to Edit Fill, I'm just going to touch Alt Backspace, and now it's filled. It's a little bit of a time saver. And then I'm going to hit Control D, and that makes the deselection. Okay. All we have to do now is move this layer down below layer, above layer 3. We'll put it right here. Okay. And now we can add the drop shadow. So we'll do that by going down and clicking here on the, wait actually you want to click on the effects FX for effects we'll click here and we'll choose drop shadow which is at the bottom right there so now we have the drop shadow and let's see what we got um, these numbers aren't too bad I do like the drop shadow to fall this way notice how it's outside the frame here. That looks good. If you don't like the sizes, you can move these around a little bit. But that gives us an effect that works fine. These are the adjustments. We'll say OK. So that pretty much gives you the gist of how to make one of these out-of-bounds photos. The, I do know there's a little spot or two that could use some fine-tuning. And that, since we have all the layers here, that would be easy to do. But I hope you picked up some technique. You might have to watch this video more than once to follow it. But there is a lot of technique and interesting things that we can learn in this video. Thanks for watching.